Hey, welcome back to setting up your Mac for photo and video editing. In the last movie, I showed you Photoshop and Lightroom, which are the main editing apps used by a lot of photographers. They're not the only editing apps available, so there is a few others which I'll cover in this movie. Finding a replacement for Photoshop is simple. Instagram is technically a replacement for Photoshop if you like that style of image. Finding a replacement for Lightroom is far harder. Lightroom's strength isn't the editing features, it's all the extras, the photo organization, the tagging, the ratings. This is what makes Lightroom an invaluable tool to photographers. There's only one other app out there that really meets some of the same criteria Lightroom does, and that's Capture One Pro 8 from Phase One. Just like Lightroom, it allows you to edit your images straight from the camera, but it also has some of the file sorting and metadata features. Especially in the fashion world, there's a lot of photographers who use it. The one place it isn't really an alternative to Lightroom is price. Capture One Pro 8 costs 230 euro. That's two years worth of Lightroom. So to my mind, you really need a reason to choose Capture One Pro 8 over Lightroom. It doesn't come with or integrate nicely with Photoshop, which is still the go-to editing app for a lot of photographers. If Lightroom really doesn't float your boat, you can check out Control One Pro 8. They've got a free 60-day trial on their website. As always, the link will be in the course notes. In the last few years, there's been one image editing app that's been kicking up a lot of fuss in the Mac community. A lot of big name sites have started recommending it over Photoshop for everyday use. Pixelmator is a photo and vector editing app only available for the Mac. For 30 euro, it offers many of the features that until recently you could only really get with Photoshop. It's designed especially for OS X, so it looks and feels like a Mac app. I've played around with it before, I've written the tutorial for it, and I've got to say, I really like it. If I wasn't so invested in Photoshop and Lightroom, it would certainly be my go-to editing app. I've used their iPad app as well, and it's really, really good. For a fraction of the cost of Photoshop and Lightroom, if you're only doing small little edits or want to do some digital artwork, it's a really good way to get into it. There's a free trial that you can get on their website. The link will be in the course notes. So if Photoshop and Lightroom are beyond your budget, check it out. It may be exactly what you're looking for. Another editing app that I actually use is Google's Nick Collection. Nick Software created the very successful mobile editing app, Snapseed. They also had a collection of apps that were standalone or worked as a plugin for Lightroom. Google bought them to use the Snapseed editor with Google+, but the other apps are still available and are still supported. The Nick Collection isn't a true replacement for either Lightroom or Photoshop. They're more of a middle ground. You can make far more extreme edits with the Nick Collection than you can with Lightroom on its own. And they've got far less of a learning curve than Photoshop. There's nothing you can really do with them that you couldn't do with Photoshop. It's just that much simpler. If you've no interest in investing the time into really learning how to use a lot of the advanced tools in Photoshop, they're a good way to do it. When Nick was a private company, the cost of the collection was about $300. Once Google bought them, they dropped that price to about $150. Like with Capture One Pro, if you're looking for a cheap alternative to Photoshop or Lightroom, you're going to have to look elsewhere. But if you're really against Adobe, you can pick them up as a standalone collection and get a lot of the editing power that you do get with Photoshop and Lightroom. If you're looking for something totally free, you need to look at GIMP, the new image manipulation program. GIMP is essentially billed as an open source Photoshop. To be perfectly honest, I'm not a huge fan. There are people out there who do amazing things with GIMP, but the learning curve is very, very steep. Like with a lot of open source software, things aren't that well documented, so you'll find yourself trawling through forums trying to work out how to do basic things. It is completely free, and I've written a tutorial on doing some simple photo edits with it, which I'll share in the course notes. So if you need something to tide you over, it's worth looking at. Another free option is Pixlr. Pixlr is available as native apps, but more interestingly, it's available in the browser. The Pixlr editor has its own web app, which is pretty good. Again, it's not really a full-fledged alternative to Photoshop or Lightroom. If you need to edit your photos and you don't have access to either of them, then it's not a bad way to go because you can access it from any browser. It's a bit more user-friendly than GIMP, so if you need something to tide you over till you can invest in Photoshop and Lightroom, it's not a bad way to go. 
videographers will be glad to hear that they have a far better selection of alternative apps. For links to all these apps, check out the course notes. There's also links to some courses on Pixelmator that were done for Tuts Plus, as well as my tutorials on Pixelmator and GIMP. In the next movie, we're going to look at Premiere Pro and After Effects.